The world seems to be spiraling out of control, from devastating natural disasters to political unrest and war and rumors of war, it's easy to feel like we're living in chaotic times. But could it be that these events are actually a sign of something greater? A warning that the end is near? In this video, we'll explore what the Bible has to say about the final days before the second coming of Jesus Christ. We'll examine the signs and prophecies that point to his imminent return, and we'll consider what we can do to prepare ourselves and others for that day. Join us as we delve into this topic. Christians have anticipated the second coming, also known as the end times, as a moment of joy and peace for thousands of years. They have also known that the world will go through great tribulations prior to the Savior's arrival. When the Savior returns, descending in the clouds of glory, he anticipates that we will be spiritually prepared to meet him. He has provided signs of the times to help discern and prepare us for his coming. God has given his prophets these signs throughout the years. Anyone can read about these signs in the scriptures, including in Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Matthew, and especially the book of Revelations. The prophets have foretold that the world will go through instability, wickedness, conflict, and misery. The prophet Daniel predicted that the period leading up to the second coming will be one of the world's greatest periods of tribulation, such as the world has not witnessed before. In Daniel 12.1, it says, At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at the time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. This will be a time when those who uphold their faith will face severe persecution. It is possible that governments, other religious organizations, or society at large will be the source of this persecution. Those who don't give up their beliefs will risk being imprisoned, tortured, or even killed. Joseph Smith said, those who cannot endure persecution and stand in the day of affliction cannot stand in the day when the Son of God shall burst the veil and appear in all the glory of his Father with all the holy angels. Many signs in the heavens will occur, including the sun being darkened, the moon being turned to blood, and the stars falling. Oceans and waters will bear witness of the second coming by being thrown beyond their boundaries. The mountains will depart, and the most destructive earthquake in history will occur, as noted in Revelations 16, 17 through 18. Other natural calamities will be a forerunner to the second coming, including floods, storms, thunders and lightnings, famines, droughts, and wildfires, among others. These disasters are often seen as a form of divine punishment for humanity's sins and transgressions. Their increasing frequency will be a warning of the approaching judgment and the necessity of spiritual repentance and turning to Christ. They will be a symbol of the greater turmoil and chaos that will take place before the second coming. Also, the very end times will bring forth a profound spiritual awakening and rejuvenation despite the grim nature of these events. Many people will turn to religion and spirituality in response to the chaos and suffering in the world in their quest for solace and purpose. The gospel will be preached to all nations in their own language, and then the end will come, which is already happening. In the book of Revelations, we learn that the Antichrist will be a strong and captivating character who will appear on the international stage and declare himself to be a leader. The Antichrist will play a part in either causing or escalating the calamity and upheaval that will occur prior to Christ's second coming. He will manipulate people and create discord through his charisma and influence, which will result in worldwide conflict and suffering. The Antichrist is largely associated with false doctrine and spiritual deception. He'll pose as a messiah or a divine figure, deceiving many with his false doctrine and assurances of redemption and security for the world. He'll work closely and be partnered with the false prophet, which may represent a certain group of people, and will work to undermine traditional religious institutions and replace them with his own ideology. Prophecy by Paul about the Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians reads, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or his worship, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. 
for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so until he is taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The rise of the Antichrist is interpreted as a precursor to the end times. His ascent is regarded as a sign of the mayhem and devastation that will come before the second coming. The arrival of the Antichrist is considered to be a very crucial precursor to the second coming since it will pave the way for the final contest between good and evil before the millennium. Many believe, based on prophecies in the book of Daniel and Revelations, that the Antichrist will appear on the scene near the beginning of the seven-year tribulation, brokering peace for seven years after a war, and the world will revere him for it. See Daniel 9 and Revelation 16 for further clarification. After the start of the seven-year tribulation, or shortly before, the Jerusalem temple will be rebuilt based on prophecies in Daniel, Ezekiel, and Revelations. In Daniel, it says that the Antichrist will cause the sacrifices and oblations to cease in the midst of the last week or final seven years, meaning that the ordinances and covenants being performed in temples will cease halfway through the tribulation. At the same time, approximately three and a half years before the second coming, the Antichrist will then resume war with Jerusalem and enter into and defile the temple after which he will then lead all nations against Jerusalem, and Jerusalem will be under siege and about to be destroyed. At this time, Christ will appear in the clouds of glory to defeat the Antichrist nations ascending onto Jerusalem and usher in the millennium. It's unknown whether the Antichrist and false prophet will be separate entities or rather a group of nations being led by the Antichrist spirit, also known as the devil. Either way, it's important that we do not fear the second coming, but rather focus on Jesus Christ and increase our faith in him. Joseph Smith once said, When I contemplate the rapidity with which the great and glorious day of the coming of the Son of Man advances, when he shall come to receive his saints unto himself, where they shall dwell in his presence and be crowned with glory and immortality, when I consider that soon the heavens are to be shaken, and the earth tremble and reel to and fro, and that the heavens are to be unfolded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and that every mountain and island are to flee away, I cry out in my heart, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness? We can look forward to the second coming with hope that all things will be made right by Jesus Christ as we turn and follow him. Jeffrey R. Holland once said, some blessings come soon, some come late, and some don't come until heaven but for those who embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ, they come. We can rest assured that these blessings do come and will come in the Savior's time, and especially through his second coming as we remain faithful to him.